Hey guys, we're going to be finishing the simulation uh, effects today and the great thing about all of them today is we can do them all with a great solid um, which is good because the solid is the easiest thing to create an after effect. So um, we're going to start, there's a couple, there's uh, some really super simple ones. So we've got a uh, rainfall here, which you got here, which uh, as you might expect creates rain. You can change the angle, the opacity and stuff. I'm going to boost this a bit so you can see it. At the moment it's set to lighten so we've still got the colour of our grey solid in the background but you can make it like, um, so you can turn off composite with original and then now I believe it will be on transparent. So uh, super useful for creating rain and you can change like the, uh, how deep the rain goes so, uh, so you got some like big ones and some small ones now so it creates a better sense of depth. You got reflections, you got um, you know there's lots of stuff you can do you can bring the ground level up so it kind of cuts off a lot sooner uh, the angle this is how many drops there are and the size so how big they are and then I believe we've got um, an angle I can't remember where it is this is the spread of them as they come down uh, ah, the wind there we go so you can like have them coming in from the side so uh, really simple to use but really powerful Snowfall does pretty much the same thing, but again, this will be um, a lot slower. Uh, you got you can increase more flakes. Uh, you can actually combine like rain and uh, snow. Just bring the speed of the rain right down, because if not, it's going to be moving too quick to like uh, almost similar speeds. And then that way, you're going to get a crazy variation because you've got two different plugins, and so you can play with like the scene depth and uh, try and match them in some places like scene depth but then try and get some variation by doing different kinds of things in there as well uh, if you duplicate as you know you got you guys know I'm big on duplicating effects uh, and just uh, randomize the seed you can get like different levels of snow so now we've got something that actually looks quite realistic just by messing about a bit and maybe we'll like back some of these off and spread these out a bit more and add some winds just to, to kind of create some variation because you don't want all your um, particles to come down in the same way like if you're trying to simulate a real snowstorm this is uh, one way of getting that effect is just really stacking these guys up so uh, there I've just got three and I think that looks uh, kind of realistic we've got some nice movement we've got some depth we've got some doing their own thing got some that are closer some that are further away so uh, you can see how just messing about with these um, can create some fairly realistic weather effects. So I definitely recommend having a look at those. So uh, next we're going to have, so we've got two here. We've got the particle systems. Uh, and this, I mean, I used a third party plugin called Particular for all my particle stuff. But there's some cool stuff you can do with these. Uh, by default, they look a bit like hair, I guess. Uh, so you got these twirly ones, you got the fire ones, but uh, by messing about with these uh, in one of the montages I did, I I created, um, I think it was for the tensor title, I created, see now we've got these little like polygons which are somewhat more interesting and you can change the birth, birth to death colour because they're not particularly nice by default. And why would they be? Uh, let me see so you got the velocity here so you can try and create some kind of cool stylized fire animations and you know you got how wide the emitter is so I mean it could take me like ages to go through all these settings but it's fairly intuitive just read what they say and just keep previewing and you can kind of see what's going on so that's particle system particle world is somewhat similar apart from it gives you a little world so if I come up into the corner here you'll see I get the chance to drag around and I believe it's camera aware, so if you make a camera, you can move things around like that. But uh, it, I mean, at the end of the day, you can get rid of uh, the floor and everything. Uh, I believe it's in maybe it's in our uh, grids and guides, so uh, you know, you can turn off those once you're done uh, doing that, and then you know, you won't be able to see them anymore. Uh, for the grid, you can like move the grid to like whereabouts. The particles are made or down to the floor, you can change the birth rate. So it's kind of like a more advanced version of the 
other effects which is more of a 2D effect this allows you to actually move around in 3D so uh, super cool again but uh, one that you guys are going to have to play with uh, Starburst I don't really use Scatter Eyes just basically allows you to explode your layer so you go from like this and then just create tiny particles and as you can see here it's a super slow effect and I don't really use it that much so I'm not going to give it the time of day Starburst. Uh, form is super cool so by default you're going to have these horrible looking bubbles because we're in draft but you have draft plus flow map you're going to think huh, not much happening change to rendered and you can see all these like kinds of cool bubbles and this is just by default again because we're in the simulations you're going to see that this is probably an effect that uh, is akin to the particles but in, in this case uh, you're just creating bubbles basically but you're going to see all the same things that you, you got in the other one um, now the look of the bubble itself is you can make a bubble texture layer so that's really cool add an environment map so it kind of reflects the thing so if we brought um, our sunset dome in here and made that the environment map uh, sunset dome I believe so if we change the reflection for strength uh, it's kind of hard to tell but the, this is now reflecting um, our image here I've turned, let me turn off environment so it's re reflecting this image so it's really cool way of getting some realistic reflections so there we can see the horizon along this bubble and all of them so uh, super cool in terms of that but then you've also got like different looks for your bubbles so and this one it's a lot easier to see the sky because you got the um the, the colors that do it you got the water beads maybe not so easy to see on that one you got spit which is a bit gross uh cartoon coffee so you know I, i'll let you guys go through these but there's some actually really cool looking bubbles um so this is definitely my go-to if i'm creating any kind of underwater scene you can just pop these around uh match them to your environment map and they'll sit in there pretty nice because there's lots of actual um nice options here to to kind of uh tweak the look of the bubbles as you can see here they look pretty organic so uh Thumb is one of my favorite effects if I'm doing anything on the water. As you can see here, there's another particle effect. And this one, uh, we just create this uh, cannon, I think it is, yeah. So uh, I'm going to move this around. And as you can see, it basically takes on the keyframes from your position. And as it moves around, at the moment, by default, we've got quite a lot of gravity so it's kind of all the things are coming down and obviously it's picked a horrible base color because after effects seems to like try and put people off discovering how nice effects are by just giving you the most horrible defaults i don't know why uh here we can change the force of the gravity we can even change it up so it's kind of like spraying up and we've got a kind of 8-bit effect going on there a bit like uh, one of the arcade games or something like that but uh, yeah there's lots of fun to be had in that you can add walls and stuff uh, and repels so the repeller particles so you can make a black and white map and then anytime it comes around one of the black and white areas it will basically repel so it will push these particles like around um, but yeah, uh, so another effect which make when useful, as you can see there's lots of different particle effects. Uh, the last two, Shatter, uh, have I showed you Pixel Poly actually? I don't think I have. I'll show you Pixel Poly. Pixel Poly is really cool, so by default it's going to happen wherever the in point of your layer is. So if you, layer, if you extend your layer backwards it won't and then it will happen there. Now you can change this in here by delaying the start time. So you've just got to know, so there we've changed it to two, so it'll start in exactly two seconds, as you can see there. And it basically just scat shatters your um, your layer into these little things. And I use this, you know, I, I still use this effect. I use this effect on the Chainsmokers tour graphics um, on one of the animations. and. You can change the randomness of the speed, so maybe some of these explode out a bit more. There's 
direction randomness so they go out in more random directions it's still a really fun effect what i like to do is actually negate the gravity because then it kind of like splits up uh, let's make the spacing a bit smaller speed randomness and the direction randomness down a bit so they kind of like split up and then go up um, maybe direction and increase this somewhat uh, let's have a look at that, change this to maybe one second so yeah, it's uh, it's really uh, haven't yeah, and what you can do is also change these um, you know, you can ch uh, keyframe these so you can have the gravity stuff like that and then I think you can bring it back down so you know maybe it goes up and then it comes down there's so many possibilities but uh, there's three different looks as well for the particles you got these triangles which are polygons you can have flat triangles so they don't really again these are going to take on the colors of your layer I'm just using a gray solid right now but you can have squares and then you can have textured squares which are a bit like confetti so if you, you can have like a really bright colored layer then this can actually work kind of well so that's pixel poly uh, last but not least, Shutter does pretty much exactly the same thing. By default, it's going to look a bit shitty. Change this to uh, render rendered. Now you're going to see the effect in its full glory. Uh, and what's great is that it then breaks off to transparency behind. So by default, it's going to create this kind of brick explosion. Uh, but you can change, uh, you know, you can change these to like all kinds of shapes. This was like one of the first effects. I think I used this in a couple of montages for a couple of transitions. If you increase the repetitions, you get more pieces. Uh, uh, you can change the direction that the thing is happening in. The extrusion depth is how thick the pieces are. So now it can create an actually quite a nice wall. And obviously, if you had a nice textured layer and not just a flat gray one, this could actually look kind of pretty wicked. Um, you've got two force layers so these are the actual things that instigate your explosion by default um, this one is like so not that big because you they want like parts of the walls to stay up but if you increase the radius you can actually make the whole wall shatter and disappear which is actually pretty useful um, physics again you got your like gravity how fast the pieces fall you can't go into minus gravity with this, which is kind of annoying. Viscosity is uh, kind of how fast it moves through the air. Here you can um, isolate which ways and which um, direction the pieces spin. And then you got your lighting and your material like with any 3D effect. So how bright these bricks are, uh, are they reflective, do they have diffuse light, uh, do they have specular, so now you can make some like really bright highlights. As you can see there, so like it's a bit bright here, but um, you get the idea. There we go, let's bring that down. Have some nice highlights on this, and again you can add a glow on it afterwards and all that kind of stuff. So uh, there we go, we've finished all the simulation um, things. We're getting towards the end of these. Like I said in my vlog yesterday, I'm kind of keen to finish these lessons now and then move on to more advanced tutorials, more specific tutorials. So I hope you'll stick with me for those. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.